and welcome back to my channel. So in case you haven't already guessed by the title of the video, today I am reorganizing my parents' fridge. From a lot of the feedback I've had from you guys, you're always interested in seeing more of these organizational type videos and they're always my favorite to create. So it was about time that I went ahead and did another one. And if you guys are interested in seeing more of the kitchen sort of organization videos, I actually did another video about a year ago where I reorganized my pantry. And if you're interested in seeing that, I will have a link somewhere over here for you guys to go and check that out. Now jumping straight into today's video, my parents' fridge is this stainless steel Westinghouse model with a freezer to one side and the fridge to the other. I've always considered it to be quite large, but now that my family of five is living here on top of the four already living here, we're trying to accommodate for the needs of nine people in one small fridge. And that's a lot of food going in and out. So the first step was cleaning out the fridge and wiping out all of the shelves. This gave me an opportunity to get rid of anything that was due to be thrown out and help visualize everything that we'd need to find a new place for. In terms of organizing everything in a way that's easy to maintain, I purchased a bunch of these clear acrylic compartments from Kmart. They're a cheaper version of the containers available at stores like Howard Storage World and are widely available online. The first compartment is this 9.6 by 10 by 37 centimeter deep and narrow drawer. The depth means that there's no space wasted towards the back of the fridge, while the width means that there's plenty of room for other containers along the shelf. The drawer has a handle at the front, making it easy to label and slide in and out of the fridge to access food towards the back. This size container is only five Australian dollars each and it's a perfect size for the kids' yogurts, cheese, crackers and other pre-packaged health snacks. I've also picked up this five by 10 by 37 centimeter shallow and narrow drawer. It's pretty much just a thinner version of the last drawer. And I didn't end up using this because in the end, I just didn't have anything to put in it, but I'm gonna hold on to it because I know that it'll come in handy at some stage or another and it was only $3 anyway. It's also actually stackable with the other deeper drawer, which comes in handy if you start running out of fridge space or want to store things like ham and cheese in the lower compartment. The next container is this double handled basket measuring 41 by 20.5 by 13 centimeters. And it only cost about eight Australian dollars. Because it's larger in size and has the extra strength of a double handle, this one will be good to store heavier items that can be pulled out like a drawer to access the contents. I'm gonna use this to store cooking ingredients such as thickened cream, cake flour and breadcrumbs with our eggs at the top of the fridge. Another item that I didn't end up using are these stackable bottle holders, which were only $4 each. Because the fridge has an inbuilt tap for cold filtered water and my parents store their wine in a wine fridge, these weren't really necessary. I've also picked up two of these 7.8 by 20 by 40.5 centimeter tubs, which fit perfectly side by side on our fridge shelves. These were only $6 Australian each and are the perfect size for a breakfast bar for things like Greek yogurt, ricotta and spreads and then a sandwich bar for things like shredded lettuce, pre-cut tomato, wrap bread, butter, and cheese slices. Unfortunately, these ones don't stack on top of each other as nicely as the last containers did, but they're still a really good option for what I'm using them for. The last item I bought from Kmart is another one that I didn't end up using, but wanted to show you guys anyway, to show how something like a cutlery drawer, which is a great size for a fringe, could be repurposed to compartmentalize things like snacks, jars and cans, and price-wise it was only about $13. You also will not be surprised to see that I've bought a lot of my food storage items from Ikea. When it comes to food storage that's constantly being washed and refilled, glass is kind of the best option as it's a bit more durable, multifaceted and environmentally friendly than what plastic is. I also love the price point and the quality of the Ikea containers, so it's always a go-to for me when it comes to storage. Having said this, I did buy one plastic container and that's this 15 by 11 by 12 centimeter Till Sluter container, which I'm going to use to store my shredded lettuce. You might remember these from my pantry organization video and I love them because of their hard plastic clear lids, which make it easy to see what's inside and the airtight rubber seal, which keeps your food fresher for longer. I was pretty disappointed to see that they didn't have the shallower version in stock when I was there because it would have been perfect for my deli drawer. One of the items that I'm new to are these $2.99 Fort Rolig glass containers that hold about 400 milliliters or roughly two cups. 
We make a lot of homemade sauces in this house, so this would be perfect for that, or individual serves of soup or salad for on-the-go meals. What I love about these Fort Rolly containers is that they can be frozen, refrigerated, and microwaved, as well as being oven safe without the lid, meaning that you could literally bake, then freeze, then refrigerate, and then microwave all in the same container. These also come in a square shaped multi-pack with three different sizes for $14.99 Australian each. The largest size is this two litre dish, which would be perfect for storing family sized pasta dinners or things like potato salad to store as leftovers. The smallest is another 400 milliliter dish, which I found is a pretty good size for pre-cut carrot sticks and cheese cubes for easy access when it comes to making the kids school lunches in the mornings. Just one of these jars fit a whole week's worth of carrot sticks for the kids and kept them fresh the whole time because of the airtight rubber seal. The middle size holds 700 milliliters or roughly three and a half cups and fit a whole bunch of grapes or cut up fruit, which was perfect for the easy to access lunch snacks. The last of these glass containers is a 600 milliliter or three cup capacity rectangular dish. I've used these for extra fruit storage so far, but plan on buying more to replace the Chinese food containers I was using in my meal planning. These safely hold a very decent sized meal, so they can be used by everybody in the house, particularly for work lunches. And last but not least, I purchased two of these 1.5 litre IKEA 365 jugs for $6.50 each. In our house, we go through a ton of milk each day, so it makes sense to buy it in the extra large three litre containers, but they don't fit well in the fridge and they tuck up all of our drink shelf space. So by pouring our light and full cream milks, juice and iced tea into these smaller airtight containers, I can fit more variety into the main family fridge and store the remainder in the bar fridge. Now, for some reason, I received a bit of criticism in my pantry organization video for this next step. Personally, I find it helpful to list off all of the items that need to go back in the fridge and then list an appropriate container to put them in. It's a way of finding a good order without having to fiddle around with swapping and changing containers later down the track. But if you find it unnecessary, that's totally okay too. In order to make it easy for everyone in the house to identify which milk is which or what shelf to put something on, I'm using these crystal clear Avery labels which coincide with the label templates available on Microsoft Word. Then it was just a matter of creating the labels with a cute font I thought my mum would like, printing them off and sticking them to each of my containers. Once all of my containers had been labelled, I just had to fill each jar and tub and put them back in the fridge. Now we go through food so quickly in this house that it just doesn't have time to expire, but by using a magnetic whiteboard pen to fix it to the side of the fridge, you can be sure that you can always just take that pen and write your expiry dates on either the bottom of the container or the top of the container to make sure that you're keeping track of when things are expiring and then it's easy enough to rub off and replace when you're replacing the contents of that container. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It's not 100% my style, but bearing in mind that the fridge wasn't huge and I was trying to accommodate for everybody in this house's needs and for the fact that the fridge is just not mine, I sort of did what I could with what I had. But everybody in the house has been really happy with 
the way that the fridge is laid out. And since I did the fridge, it's been really easy for everybody to maintain, which is what we did the video for in the first place. And I'm very much looking forward to doing another version of this video in a couple of months when we move into our new house and I can sort of redo it according to our family and school lunches and James's work lunches and my own meal planning. So I'm very excited to do that. And I haven't actually bought a fridge for this new house yet. So if you guys have any suggestions, I want your dream fridges with space and functionality in mind in the comments down below. I really wanna hear about all of the models that you guys dream about. And of course, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up so I know you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more videos like these. And if you are already subscribed to my channel but you aren't seeing my videos, make sure to hit the little notification bell because sometimes these videos don't pop up in your subscription feeds. I'm not entirely sure why, but that's just the way that YouTube seems to work at the moment. And other than that, I hope to see you guys next time. Bye.